Hello, welcome to the Unsworn Gamer. I'm your host, Rob, and joined by the Twitch chat. It's Necromunda Weirdo Day. Necromunda Weirdo Day. Bum, 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 bum. Bum, 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 bum. Uh, <laughs> Necromunda Weirdo Day, and we're going to be looking at Necromunda stuff. We're not going to be painting Necromunda like we were last week. I'm just going to be looking at the rules, because honestly, today was a bit of a stress. We're going to look at this article for these cool new minis, um, and then I'm going to tell you about like a little journey I went on this morning, uh, which led me to be able to get my hands on these these publications, uh, the Necromunda rule books, digital rule books, FYI, uh, which is pretty fun. All right. Uh, so let's get straight on uh, with uh, let's get straight on with this, eh? The Outland Beastmasters are back with more brothersomely burrowing bug buddies or whatever it says. Uh, Necromunda has a pest control problem. Uh, there they are. <laughs> uh, the Ashways Nomads have a whole warrant. So these are these are nomad. This is for the the nomads, right? Okay, so. This article, I, I read this article yesterday on stream, but I'm going to just be super clear. Number one, the miniatures are cool. This guy hunts down these little ripperjack things which live in the sand. They call called ripperjacks? Uh, uh, no, they're millisaurs. Sorry, these are millisaurs. And they, they, they hide, they hide inside like the sand or something, which is like pretty gross, right? And then they come and like just eat your face off. So it's like Dune. They are cute. They are cute. This guy's wearing one as a as a cloak, which I think is fun. Um, if they weren't enough, there were some breeds of Beastmaster on the loose. They found some other nasty vermin to pal about with. Millisaurs. So these millisaurs here. These Icarus invertebrates were likely smuggled onto Necromunda centuries ago, courtesy of the planet's lax import controls. To help clear debris and other critters from mining tunnels, left unchecked, the voracious worms have now spread across much of the planet, from outland ore pits to underhive sump nests. So uh, there we go. They, they've they've everywhere. There's a there's just a shower of them all over the place. Showed a weird necromunda on Tuesday, building on Wednesday, then painting on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, still painting on Sunday because it takes ages. <laughs> you can't Craig David necromunda, please. You can't seven days it. Um, the guy cosplaying as a worm at the same time, and I'm here for it. Okay, Rob's really happy about the guy cosplaying as a worm. That's pretty fun. So he can hang out with the other worms. It's a bit of like a... Uh, this is how the old ones used to look. Lil Burn Level, love that. Send me that. Oh my god, these are awful. <laughs> these are awful. Uh, oh, okay. So those are the Ripper Jacks. Oh, and there's the Millisaurs, bottom right-hand corner. I'll try and make them bigger. Hold on. They're the millisaurs. Ooh. Okay. They are... So, giant rats. Have we had giant rats released? We've had rats released, but I don't think... We've had bomb rats released, but I know that we haven't had giant rats released yet. I'm pretty certain we haven't had giant rats. Can we talk about the weird pyrotechnic on the left here? This is great. Okay, we haven't had the giant rats released, which is exciting for the rat gang in the chat. Rat gang. Rat gang. Um... Why would you want a rat without a bomb when you could have a rat with a bomb? That's the chat. You completely understand. Uh, can you put a bomb on these worm lads? <laughs> I like that the chat now like, can I put a bomb on any creature in Necromunda or outside Necromunda? Um, it's, a good, it's a good argument and a good, good question. I'm not sure. Um, Giant rats have more space for bombs. That's true. You could technically get more bombs on a giant rat versus a regular sized rat. No, you missed the point. Bigger rats, they could carry bigger bombs. Okay, everyone in the chat is at the same same point. All right, good. Uh, <laughs> not dogs, no bombing doggos. Okay, agreed. We all agree, no doggos, right? Okay, but, but millisaurs, fine. They had a pigeon bombs in Warhammer Fantasy. They did have pigeon bombs in Warhammer Fantasy. That was actually really cool. They should bring that back. They should bring back a lot of, like, medieval nonsense. They should have, like, I don't know, donkeys. Like, you know, kind of available. Like, a donkey's like, all right, I've got to carry a lot of stuff. I guess if you were going into battle, you would probably ride a donkey versus not riding anything. I think. Like, obviously you want a horse or an elephant. But you would probably settle for a donkey. 
I know donkeys are real. What I'm saying, I'm, that's why pigeons are real. Do you not think pigeons are real? What the fuck? Um, donkeys with baggage train. Yeah, kangaroos. Camel is the pro option. Camel is a good option. Yeah, donkeys let you take more artifacts of power. <laughs> pigeons are not robots. Birds are... Oh, my God. Anyway, these Icarus invertebrates were likely smuggled onto Necromunda centuries ago, courtesy of the planet's lax import control. So we've done this. Their rock-skinned hides make Millisaurs a nightmare to shift. Even worse, their ringed maw and robust digestive system allow them to chew through anything put in front of them, be that piles of rocks, metal bulkheads, or unlucky juves. Um, He-Man rode a tiger. He did. It's correct. A tiger is also a good option. I'm saying there are many animals to mount. But what I'm saying is, is if the old world comes back, or when the old world comes back, they should lean into more just regular. Like, where is like the cow riding cavalry? You know, you're like, uh, not a bad. Like, could you ride a bull into battle? That's what I'm saying. Okay. Anyway. These beasties can easily infiltrate the environment and the Beastmasters who train them share the same skill, having learned to wriggle through the tunnels bored by their pets. <gasps> That's cool. So their pets dig little tunnels and these little fellas, like, shifty behind them. All right, that's pretty cool. Um, uh, gangers who think they can put the sturdy rock creek floors of the hive between them and Hungry and Millisaur are for a rude awakening. Their burrowing skill lets them freely wriggle under impassable terrain. Wow, okay. Gangs can hire up to two Outland Beastmasters, each with a personal gaggle of beasts, so you can now infest the floor and the ceiling with unpalatable... Okay, so this is where this is where everything became a problem. This is where absolutely... And I want to shout out a couple of people in the chat. I want to shout out Warhammer Nerd, who's currently in the chat. Uh, Colonel Cabby, thanks for subscribing! Um, I want to shout out him in the chat. Uh, and I want to... And uh, I also want to shout out Diadrin. Uh, who both helped me out. So this is the problem that um, this is the problem that currently happened. So there I am, being like, okay. So this morning I'm doing all my scheduling, and I was like, right, on today's show, I want to look because they've released so many uh, like miniatures. Like yesterday, I think Grant said, um, uh, Dajun, sorry, uh, said that uh, the there's still some unreleased. Um, like unreleased beast kits, because obviously we saw the Ripper Jacks last week, and now we've seen the Millisaurs. There's some unreleased beast kits from the book, and I'm like, what fucking book? So then I, like, this morning, just very hilariously, I'm just like, what book are the Ripper Jacks in? Nothing. Silence from the internet. And I, like, the best I found, actually, was that on um, Yak's Tribe, which is where you can find all Necrom and the kind of information, the best thing I found was on Yak's Tribe, you can, um, there's like a homebrew campaign book, like, that's got, like, the rules for this stuff. And I was like, right, okay, but where are the official rules? Like, you literally can't, like, and then someone pointed out, someone pointed out that if you go onto, like, the web store, if you go onto the web store, and then, like, so if you go onto Forge World, like, we'll try and do it now, actually. So if you go into Forge World, this, so this should work as a process of finding out where rules are, but it's it's bonkers that it's actually this difficult. So you go into Forge World, you go into Box Games, and then you go into Necromunda, right? And then there's the Ripper Jacks. So there's the the newly released Ripper Jacks. So let's open the Ripper Jacks, which are an insane price. Um, and then it says, I think in the product description, after the paints, uh, that. The pack includes fighters. There we go. Four rules for using Outland Beastmaster in your games can be found in Necromunda Book of the Outland supplement. But, like, as far as I'm aware, that's the only place that this is said. Like, anywhere. Right? Like, the only place. And I was just like, it took me ages. I literally had to, I literally had to do a tweet to find out like, I had to literally do a tweet here, and then I also had to, like, message people I personally knew playing Decromunda to find out. And that is mind-boggling how difficult it is to get into this game. Like, the, the, like and then you've got to go buy the book, right? Uh, but it's just it's, it's just crazy. Uh, I bet it tells you on Wahapedia. It, I wish it did. Uh, hello, Fickle, Ficklebrush. Uh, welcome to the chat. Uh, yeah, like, it, it just doesn't... 
it doesn't say Wapedia. I wish it said on Wapedia. Wapedia would say. Anyway, so that's kind of my like my like little cl- complaint today because I'm actually like jazzed, like jazzed about Necromunda as you all know at the moment, and I'm just like, this is awful to get into. This is legitimately awful. Like, and saying the community is a great resource for Munda, that's true, Warhammer Nerd. And there are really great, like, the best way to get into Necromunda is you go onto Goonhammer, you type in Necromunda, and you read their resource guides. Because if that didn't exist, it would be practically impossible. Insane. Anyway, that's just, um, I worry the barriers are on purpose. Yeah, it's odd. Right, like, and I don't want to get into like business practices again, but it's truly insane that it's like because the reason we're also talking about it is there was a preview uh, article which we discussed. Oh, actually, we should probably discuss that. Oh no, we've discussed that. There are currently three kits. I'm pretty certain there are currently three kits that are on pre-order this week, and then they've obviously just showcased the new Ripper Jacks. Yeah, so there are there are three kits that are currently on pre-order this week. Um, there's, oh, get past all this stuff. Uh, uh, yeah, there, here we go. Uh, there's, uh, the Mecta Paladis Corpse Harving Party, phenomenal kits. Uh, there's the Rex Spires and Estus Jet, which I'm kind of okay, well, I'm not too bothered about. And then there's Ajex Gorgoroth, uh, Lord of the Fist, which is a phenomenal sculpt, right? So, there's three, on, and they've, there's three, and then they've just showcased a new miniature. So, you're like, wow. Like, you're putting a lot of advertising out for all of your releases. How do I start playing this game? And if it wasn't for Goonhammer, it wouldn't be able to, like, you wouldn't be able to learn how to play. And honestly, like, if I was if I was Games Workshop or if I was, like, working on this particular game, that would be a resource that I would immediately create because it's pretty embarrassing for you as a business. Like, their marketing department, it, like, is pretty bad. Um, anyway. Uh, just returned from the chat. Hello, focus Twitch streams. Give us a stop supporting it, and I'll live it. I'll live on 100. I agreed with that 100. Um, percent My hoverboard weirdo got grenaded and crashed into a wall immediately. I love that. Join the campaign. Local people running it. Uh, ran a demo game for me on Friday, and it's really fun system. Hey, Rage Pirate, I'm really excited to get into it. So, and and off the back of the conversation we had last week, all I'm going to do is do a couple of like matched play. Uh, events here at the arena and i'm going to play a couple of match play games and what i mean by that is is i'm just going to do like thousand credits no campaign mainly to learn the mechanics learn the mechanics play a few games have a fun time and then do a campaign after i think um uh like i'm not getting into kind of the whole like ecosystem of a campaign until i know how to learn them until i know how the mechanics work a bit more um, approach to tabletop having my first campaign on Thursday please do come back and let us know next Tuesday what you thought of it uh, tactics cards uh, just use Games Workshop for the models and rules which we need to pull apart and put to sense- sensible um, uh, hello uh, blood clot plots anyway that's my kind of complaint over now on with the fun because it's weird um, uh, like absolutely like crazy things crazy things is all I'm going to say now let's just get into it and again thank you to Diadrin and Warhammer Nerd who uh, sorted me out. How big is that lad? I reckon he's pretty big. Talking about um, the miniatures. The miniatures just are mind-blowing, right? That's the point. Having more chances to learn slower, get a feel for the game, and then add more rules. Yeah, that um, that's what I'm trying to say. I think the smartest play is you just build you just build a thousand points or a thousand credit gang, and then, you know, you just, you just play. We run an event. Uh, Focus Twitch Streams, thanks for subscribing. First time you've ever been here. Nice. Thanks, bro. Um, or lady or MB, whatever you are. I'm not sure. Um, uh, did a campaign about four years ago. We had custom scenarios as well where somebody acted as an AI with tons of plague bearers with stats, stats reactive sounds. was really cool. Uh, thanks, Focus Twitch Streams. I really start tuning at 11 a.m. Ron seems to be on time now. I am. Don't mess with schedule, Rob. He's dangerous. Anyway, so what I thought we'd do is we'd go through the Book of the Outlaws and I'd see if there was any other unreleased miniatures that we haven't yet seen. For instance, giant rats. So I thought it would be really fun to look through this. So this is the actual publication where all this stuff is found. Um, Build a 1,000 credit gang. Never change it. Coat in three layers of goss varnish, you say. I mean, literally that. Never change it. Just have it. (laughs) You could build like a bit of a horde do you know what i mean you could build you could buy like two or three boxes of like a, a single necromunda gang and then build like all the weapon options you want and then when the game turns up oh, okay i'm gonna use these these ones these are fun um 
anyway, the campaign stuff sounds sounds still mania. No, I don't believe in still mania. I think still mania is actually moronic, personally. Uh, but that's a different conversation for another time. Uh, do we know if the Ashways Nomad bug handler is Forge World? Uh, I think the Ashways bug handler. Yes, it is. Uh, I am old enough for Still Mania. I did an entire show on Still Mania. In fact, actually, I think I covered it in one of my videos. Um, you're moronic. <laughs> what is Still Mania? Oh, my God. Someone find me the link and I'll talk about it. Um, Got to go. Painted Orcs, look after yourself. Um, okay, anyway, so here we are. So we actually got one of the PDFs. We got one of the actual books, right? Here we go. So, like, this is one of the actual... But no one's credited in here, obviously. Uh, no credits for anyone in this book. Sad face. Uh, I don't watch. Now I'm intrigued. <laughs> That's the point. Uh, there we go. This is Still Mania. Okay. Oh, no. So, Still Mania is this. Nigel Stillman was well known for playing the spirit of the game. In the spirit of the game, already in that single sentence, uh, what they've done is they proposed that there is this spirit of the game, a correct way to play, not multiple ways to play. For instance, you might want to play very narratively, semi-narratively. You might want to play like a tournament-style game um, or any of those things. You might want to play a narrative competitive game, a mixture of things. And therefore, already, the spirit of the game is something that's proposed as being something accurate as opposed to how you want to play. This is a personal opinion of the ultimate spirit of wargaming. Pick your army just under 2,000 points. Write down the roster and never amend it again. Make sure it fits the background. Okay. It should fit the background. It's literally an army. That doesn't make any sense. Collect and paint the army. Give it three coats of gloss varnish. Then never touch it with a paintbrush again. Okay. Give every character and regiment a name. There aren't regiments in games. What if you want to have 10 Zangor and then another time have 20 Zangor? Just for variety because they're your models. Um... Uh, do not even possess extra alternative units. Just stick with what you've got. Boring and lame. Uh, make carrying case that fits the army exactly. Boring and lame. Fight every battle with the same army and never change anything in it. Kind of cool. Kind of like that because you get to like be like, yeah, last time this guy did this or last time that happened. That's actually kind of cool. I like that. Fighting big games with just your 2,000 points uh, uh, to the hell with the odds. It's obviously, that's just stupid. Never wear, vary, or change your army in any way. Resist all temptation. Like, what? Like, never have any more fun. Like, also only eat bread. Don't buy new shoes. Just suffer for the rest of time. Model every magic item on the character who carries it no matter what it is. I actually agree with that. Okay? I agree with that. Uh... Is this a troll and or a dickhead? No, this is this is serious. For a long time, people pointed this out as the way that you should play. Um, and anyone that didn't play this way was a power gamer. Right? Um, suffer the still mania not to live. <laughs> Can't be real. Gloss finally says shoes to preserve them. <laughs> no, my argument is not spend more money constantly. That's obviously stupid. My argument, and if I have an argument, is do what makes you happy. If you have a 2,000-point army, but you would like to add one additional unit to it, then you can do it. If you'd like to have a different army, then guess what? You're also allowed to do that too, because it's your choice. That's what's nice, right? Um, good way to lose 100 games in a row. Also that. Uh, who cares if all your opponents know your army composition by heart? No one cares. I don't care if you know my army composition. I I message my friends my army list before I play a game with them so that we can have fun. Um, uh, let the only... Uh, lol, no one ever said that if you're not still mania, you're too gamey. Please just read up above. <laughs> let the only surprises be your deployment and your tactical moves. I think eventually you'll know what they will do. Like Nathan's played basically gets against me for six years, and I love it, right? Like, I love it to pieces. He's just a babe. Like, I don't care what he brings. He can bring a million gits, five gits. I love it all. It's great. But he takes different gits lists. Sometimes there's Boingrots. Sometimes there's Squid Gobbers. Whatever he takes, I'm happy. Um, shrug off defeat. Learn lessons and keep on practicing. Play for the fun of playing. Uh, when you win, the excellence of your generalship will be be beyond doubt. Uh, so that's still mania. Uh, there you go. Not sure if we need to cover that anymore. Um, but for a long time, because uh, again, for people who don't know, for a long time, Games Workshop were anti anyone playing the game uh, competitively or at a tournament. 
Uh, and so things like that got bandied around. A load of old people uh, post that picture a lot um, and say things like, yeah, real ways. Re like, they're like, they're tr like trad, like, you know how you got trad wives on TikTok? They're trad gamers. <laughs> they're like trad gamers. Uh, Nathan clearly hates the hobby with all his different units. Exactly. Um, uh, like Nathan is a tinkerer though, always talking through his choices on WhatsApp. That is true, Rob Kelly. That is correct. Um, old people rule, suck it up, kiddos. Yeah, trad wives. Uh, Pershaw, don't make me explain trad wives. Like, they it, it's, <laughs> it's just, they're, they're, there's a, there's a, as always, there's a counterculture. So if you say, um, I think it's progressive that women can vote, there's then, there's people who are like, oh, I'm a trad wife, I don't believe I should be able to vote, etc. Um, the only way to play 40k is that one picture of that guy who blocked the full bite white scars army lining up. That is the correct play to white play. That is the correct way to play Warhammer. I agree 100. percent Trad what? Trad wives. The trad culture movement. Oh my god, this is we're not even close to Necromunda. Trad wives. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not looking at trad wives with you. That's for Friday. Come back on fuck around Friday, and we'll do this whole conversation then. Right. Not today. Rob Tradwives don't exist in Necromunda. I bet they do somewhere. Right? Uh, who is Trad? Does he like Warhammer? Oh my god. I wish I could just go home. <laughs> uh, uh, basically, let's cloak white supremacy in tradition. That's correct. Uh, the cops definitely have Trad Wives, yes. Trad Wives are close to dystopian world. That is true. Look at this guy. He loves a Trad Wife. Um, <laughs> the guy above it is the guy that didn't have a trod wife. Uh, uh, right. Anyway, so let's look at this book, shall we? And let's look through all the details. Uh, I like the little still mania chat. That was fun. I've done a video on still mania before. Um, rad wives in the ashen waste. That makes more sense that we've got rad wives. Uh, <laughs> that's actually quite cool. We could pivot to rad wives. It would just radiate it to shit. Uh, New Age Tradicals. <laughs> exactly, Gilly. Uh, still don't think it's real. What, Necromunda or Tradwives? Which one? Uh, right, okay. So there's loads of awesome resources in here. I'm super happy that I finally got a hold of this book, so I'm going to read it, like, maybe tomorrow or later, uh, which is fun. But what I thought what we'd skip to, what we'd skip to is... Is the beasties. The beasties at the bottom and see if there's any beasties we haven't yet seen. Uh, Necromunda is a hoax. Uh, is that what rad cleansers are for? <laughs> this is really derailed as a show. I don't know what to tell you. This has gone off. It's got a bad start. Okay, the rules for the for the short kings are in here. The art in this book, by the way, stupendous, stupe, stu, still tendous, stupendous, right? Uh, slap Stillman. I agree. Loris, like. Look at look at the art. The art is great. Look at these cityscapes. They look amazing. The, the art in this book is just really good. Be great to know who did that uh, art. Yeah, me, I mean, obviously. Oh, doesn't say, unfortunately. Um, but whatever. Corpo's going to corp it. Corpo. So then you've got like, a bunch of like the, the special stuff inside here as well, which is really cool. Um, and you've got all the descriptors and what they can do. And what each unit can do. And look at the options. It's so fucking crunchy. It's nuts. So the champion here. And it's got Ironhead Squat Prospector Drill Master Equipment List. So the different armor you could take. Carpace armor. Flak armor. Uh, mesh armor. Field armor. Personal equipment. You can have a bio booster. A drop rig. Filter plugs. A grav shoot. A Medicaid kit. Photo goggles. Photo lumens. What blows me away about Necromunda as a game system is they've effectively, like, like d and d this bad boy, right? Like, there's just loads of shit. Loads and loads of shit. Loads. And what's crazy is no one's run with it as something high-end. Like, can you take a Dispel Scroll, though? No, I haven't. Uh, proper squats like uh, what we used to have in the old days, I agree. Uh, maybe someone will post about how they were on the art team of a particular drawing. Let's hope so. <laughs> it's super complicated. Arguably too complicated, right? Uh, a respirator uh, and then access to different weapons. Heavy weapons, you can have an iron head flamer, an iron head heavy stubber, a mining laser. Um, he could also have an, uh, like, uh, wait, what's his melee weapons? 
He can have a power pick, a power axe, an iron head arc welder. Uh, what's more rulesy? Kills team or Necromunda? Necromunda by like a significant degree. Can't believe they've not marketed the game that way. Necromunda loads of shit. <laughs> <laughs> Tournament Necromunda will just be Vansar for days though, right? Vansar banned. So, uh, we banned Vansar. Like, sucks to suck, but there you go. Um, uh, talking about D&D, &D, has anyone seen the Adult Nonsense parent company? Yeah, Blank Wizard, we chat. I, I think I chatted about it the other day. But, obviously, it's nonsense. And what's funny is most people have realised that you don't need um, the OGL. Like, you never needed the OGL. So, now they're just like, lol, I don't need this. I think you almost need to approach Munda like D&D, &D, right down to the book collecting. Di I, see, this is what I agree with Diadrin. It feels utterly unlike a war game. Like, I, I picked up uh, Marvel Crisis Protocol last year, as you know. Uh, I've been doing a lot of Star Wars recently. And both those two game systems feel very much like a war game. They make sense. Like, you build an army, there's a mission. Um, like, there's army builders. Like it all I know mean, there's army builders also for Necromunda. But it all makes sense. Like, it makes sense. This is not like a war game this is obviously this is more of an rpg i would say than it is anything but i'm very excited about it being more pick up and playable um uh like for you know for pickup games so just having a thousand point gang meeting up with someone doing a thousand point gang i'm sure the reason i don't get to D, &D listen i don't want to like uh, i don't want to at anyone but has anyone joined a D, &D campaign that lasted like two weeks or has anyone ever joined like a Warhammer, like, hey, we're going to do a thousand point escalation league that's lasted three weeks and no one did it. Like, I'm sure we've all been part of those like failed processes. Like the hardest thing to do is to get like that organization, right? Uh, like Necromunda is not a war game. It's getting six to eight rowdy people and having a nice time. Rage Pyro, I agree. That's where I'm at. Did you ever have a go at the old Inquisitor game? No, I did not. Um, uh playing a two-year campaign with the wife during COVID. I'm glad you had a great time with that. That's great. Uh, you can play an RPG one-shot. You can play an RPG one-shot. That's how I'd like to probably approach uh, Necromunda. I'd like to approach Necromunda like an RPG one-shot until maybe I f have the resources or I have the local group or I have the time to run a Necromunda campaign. Um, pray for Mojo. Yeah, Last RPG, I joined, fell over because of the first session. There we go. Um like so yeah that's a great personal that's a great example i'd like to play necromunda as an rpg one shot more than anything else yeah literally bought uh, a a gang for necromunda campaign last year never even got started right yeah that's what that's kind of where i'm at right and it's not because it's a bad game i just think ultimately it's incredibly crunchy and just very very wild to get in i know diadrain and warhammer nerd are both in the chat a huge fans of necromunda and they run their campaigns so it's kind of like uh me saying oh i reckon dnd is quite crunchy to get into and then two like actual GMs, like game masters coming in and being like, guess what? <laughs> uh, there must be simpler rules that work for the minis. The minis are lush. There are monkey X. That's true. Also, it's great that all you need to really get in Necromunda is a £20 box of gang. Hey, Rage Pyro, Pyro, Rage Pyro, sorry. That's what I'm trying to say. It's actually a quite accessible game financially. What you need is a board of terrain. That maybe is a bit of an issue, but you could always just use Coke cans and bottles and cereal boxes and stuff, right? Um, and then you just need a very cheap gang. So, like, financially, it's actually very, very cheap to get into. Um, uh, like, Gunnar have made their own much simple rules. They have budget bolt. I was going to talk about that in a little bit, actually. Um, uh, what's, what did uh, Cabbage say? Had a DD campaign last three sessions, but my next one's going on three years now. There you go, Cabbage. Do you know what I mean? Like, it all changes up. Um, anyway, right, so... All oh, right, we're at the Beasties. Okay, this is where we, I want it to be. We're at the Beasties. We're at the Beasties. Okay, I mean this. I mean, look at this art, bro. Look at this art. This is the one. Um, uh, the game mats are great for kitchen table gaming. Good. Ashways has made a sparse board more playable for Munda, so it's a little bit more accessible. Yeah, and I think Diadrain in a lot of ways, like Ashways, not that it makes more sense, but like you know, some little cars and go. Vroom, vroom, it's kind of cool. Right, like it, it's it's good, I think. But like the stuff I'm really excited about is all the gangers and hangers on. Every time they release like a new ganger, like not ganger, sorry, a hanger on or like a, a little crew, like the Beastmasters we're about to look at. Um, I'm like, that's awesome, that's cool, because that's like a one shot buy, right? 
This is what we like. This is what you can't really do in Warhammer, which is actually really exciting for Necromunda, and is actually the antithesis of still mania is I could build myself a gang and I could be like, right today I'm building like this much of my gang. And then I've bought my one hanger on or like I bought an outland beast master. That's what I've done. I've bought an outland beast master, this one. And next week or next month, I've gone and bought a different, like, you know, special character to add into my little gang. So it's the same core gang, but I keep adding a little dude in and there's some real variety in replay value. I think for that, like, which I think is quite nice. Um, also, the Mad Max vibes make it more cinematic for a lot of people. That's fair, Blank Wizard. I think that's fair. Uh, the 3D train made Necromunda for me as a kid. Those walkways and bulkheads seem magical. I think that's fair. I think making a class game with brilliant lore, that making it stupid hard to get into, is some Games Workshop executives kink. Wolfram Studios, I agree. Like... We got like we've talked about this before, but Necromunda. Like I think I think I'm like permanently in on Necromunda. Like and and I know we've been talking about it for several weeks, but getting into it is such an amazingly difficult process. Like so, I'm taking my time getting into it, getting the books, understanding what the fuck is going on, building the minis, uh, and I think going through that process. If you go back a couple of weeks where we talked about like if you're going to do a campaign, I feel like you need to like build the model cut his arm off, stick the other weapon on. Like, it should be WYSIWYG if you're doing the campaign. That The campaign should be slow. Do you know what I mean? And, like, it should be that process because, like, almost that's the that's the spirit of what it is. Whereas Pick Up Necromunda feels really evocative to me because it's not so much of a challenge, right? Uh, the vehicle rules are a lot more fun. You can go mad building your idea vehicle. The fuzz in my campaign have a paddy wagon now. That's fun. The police have a paddy wagon. All right, I'm in. Sylvania is dumb. Commit to what you'll pay forever when you're a low information player. Ignore what you learn and carry on with the random shot you chose when you didn't know what you were doing. Correct, Colonel Cabbage. That is correct. Um, buy one box of a gang. Equip them however you like from the box. Give three coats of gloss advice. Then read the rules. <laughs> okay, can we stop dunking on Stillmania, please? Okay, right? Right, okay. So, Outland Beastmasters. We're finally at... A couple of weeks into Necromunda, we're finally at a gang page. So it's going to cost us 100 credits of our 1,000 credits that we start with to have an Outland Beastmaster. Fighters on Necromunda quickly learn to use anything and everything they can to get an edge over their foes. Outland Beastmasters take this ethos to include the countless critters and other creeping, crawly, and biting horrors that infest the lower regions of the hive or live beneath wasteland settlements. Using ancient techniques handed down through the centuries, they employ lures, animal calls, and shock staves to capture and then train everything from the humble hive rat to the massive rock skin to millosaurs. Millosaurs. Um, okay, they sound pretty cool. For a price, which is 100 credits, a beastmaster will lend their talents and their critters to a gang, often taking their foes by surprise. So, uh, necromancer gang dudes in the chat, just clarify that this is correct for me. I build a gang that's 900 credits. I could then pay 100 credits to have an Outland Beastmaster in my gang. Correct or incorrect? That's what I would like to know. I assume I probably also would have to pay for the Ripper Jacks or whatever, whatever beastie I took. But nice. Okay, so that's what I'm really excited about. I absolutely love that I can do a pickup game for... Uh, no, the beast also costs extra credits. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Like, you've obviously got to pay for the beasties and stuff. But what I mean by that is, because it says available to any gang, I can buy the Corpo Cops, the the Rat Gang, I could buy the Weird Creepy Psychers, or I could the Meat Eaters, any of those. I could build a 900-point credit list and take a Beastmaster for 100 credits. Um, shame you can't get a gang of Beastmasters on their critters. A gang that's one guy and six different weird animals. Uh, how is that different to just being part of the gang? Um, how is that different being part of the gang? Just mainly because, like, so, like, I think, okay, as an example, let me just go back up, because this is perfect, this is here. So the uh, so the Ironhead Squat Prospector's Exodriller, which I think is this picture here. So this is the Exodriller, Pershaw, here. You can't have him in, like, a Van Saar gang. It says available only to Ironhead Squat Prospector gangs, 
right? So there are comp. So there's loads, as I understand it, and again, I can be corrected by the chat. As I understand it, there are loads of additional dudes that you can have in every gang. Kind of like there's a massive pool of generic dudes. Like again, if we go back to that community article that we were just looking at, uh, where's the where's the one? No. Uh, well, I mean, if we look on like Forge World, for example, the Underhive Traders, uh, I'm not sure they go in a gang, but the Escher Shiver, an apprentice clan chemist, probably only go in Escher. Uh, the Blade and Matriarch maybe only goes inside Escher. Uh, maybe these guys only go in Goliath, but maybe they don't. Like the Goliath champion, uh, Axon Hammer, the outlaw Goliath house agent, you might be able to just take in a full gang. Uh, you can't have more specialists and basic gangers, juves, leaders, and champs. There you go. There's a limit of hangers on you can have. It starts at one. But that's not terrible, right? Like, that's fine. Like, I'm not asking to, like, have a gang of different dudes. I'm just saying that there's loads of extra guys you can add. Uh, so those guys only go in their gang. All right, so that's how it changes, basically, per sure, um, to answer your question. You can just add a dude. Oh, this is... Forge Order's crashed for some reason. Um... Let me just find out. But yeah, probably, if it looks like it's from Goliath, you could probably only put it in Goliath. If it, like, the propagandist and agitator, I assume you can just put in your army. Um, you know, uh, the slopper and scabber, I assume you could just put in your army. Like, uh, the Escher, no, oh no, they, they probably go in their own one. Um, but yeah, there's loads of extra hangers on that you could put in your army. Like, you obviously can't put them all in. Sorry, gang. Sorry, gang. Um, the big question is, are the vagina or penis monsters... Is you a vagina or penis monster, man? <laughs> I mean, that's the real question. Like, can you imagine how cool a pickup game would be? You get your little gang, and you turn up with some outland beastmasters with ripper jacks. You're like, ah, more of a vagina fella, I see. Right? Forge has crashed for some reason. It's Forge mate. All right. Um... There are gang-specific bounty hunters, and then there are generic hangers-on. Bounty hunters have a chance of leaving your gang after the game, but pickup games wouldn't matter. There we go. Right? Awesome stuff. So you could have a bounty hunter. So if you were playing Goliaths, you can have Gorshif Hammerfist, the bounty hunter, in your pickup game. Perfect. I honestly think that the true spirit of Necromunda, the campaign, is great. But like, I'm really thinking about a vehicle... For like what I would do if I wanted to have a lot of people playing Necromunda with me. Like if I wanted, so what I would like to do is organize an event here in Nottingham. Where like, and I'll just make it a free event. Like not going to charge anyone. We'll all just turn up. And we'll all turn up for a whole day. And then we'll just build a gang of Necromunda dudes. And you'll just turn up with a thousand dudes, a thousand gold or whatever. With like a hanger on. And you just play games and just have a fun day. Right? That feels like that's very accessible and easy to achieve. Versus run a campaign. Right, um, isn't there also a rule for having hangers-on characters as your gang boss now? There might be, and we need to look at a force org chart. Hangers-on can go into any gang, mostly. The more reputation your gang has, the more hangers-on you can take, but also that won't matter in a pickup game, right? Uh, can I borrow a gang and come? Obviously, per sure. Uh, free turnips in Nottingham. There we go. Um, uh, there you go. So I got. we've even now got some moderators, right? You want a few arbitrators. There we go. Easy peasy. Fun, right? Um, there are loads of sweet Necromunda STLs. Uh, loads of sweet ones. We could look at that in a bit, right? How long does a pickup game last? The guys in the chat will probably be able to know better. Um, I'm hoping to play a pickup game with Scrivo before his event in three weeks, whenever Pershaw's down. He knows. Each beast will tell you how many per handler, either one or three. One, uh, uh, there are loads of nice smaller scenarios. Right, look at this. Great. So we're like this feels less daunting than a um, feels so much less daunting than a campaign. I'm just gonna say it right. Uh, it takes about two to three hours for a pickup game. Wow, that's quite cool. For me, Necromunda is always fun if the terrain was the thing me and my friends took the most time to make. Well, I'm gonna 3D print a load of terrain for the event. Is what I'll do. Um, I've seen a game last five minutes and two and a half hours. Okay, wow. <laughs> like, I don't think you would just, like, ban anyone min-maxing. Just, like, Vantar banned. Or these weapons banned. If there's just stuff that's too good in the game, just, like, I just ask what well, I'm a nerd or diagram, like, what should I ban? But, like, ban these things. You can't take them. Like, easy. Easy peasy. Or maximum zero one of this. You know, a blast template apparently is really good. So just zero one. Or, you know what I mean? Like, just make it so... 
cause we do combo that like it's not meant to be like no one plays this as like a tournament game anyway so just do it um anything which needs banning uh rules for grenade launchers right um yeah min max isn't the point it's a cool campaign for fun yeah where bomb rats are too good to get banned obviously obviously bomb rats are not allowed uh sometimes you just get hard dice though that's true all right okay so back to the book so, yeah. Okay, Beastmaster. For a price, the Beastmaster will lend you their talents and crits to their gang, often taking their foes by surprise. The Beastmaster themselves are also no small threat, often having learned tricks from their pets by long association. Whether it's in the, in the bad zones or the underhive or in the deep wastes, a gang will be thankful of the skills a Beastmaster can bring to the fight. Or, should things go especially badly, the walking meals under their control. Hey, I, listen, I think the campaign rules are absolutely a way to go, but you're asking someone to learn a game system and then a campaign system on top? Let's learn the game system first. Like, this is what GW should be doing, right? Like, I'm sat here. Like, they should just hire outside people and be like, hey, listen, this is our game system. Tell me what it's like to get into it. And then the feedback should just be like, listen, you should just produce, like, a free PDF of, like, how people can play pickup games. Like, go play, learn, and then they can get into the whole thing deeper and later. Like, they should have loads of vehicles for people to be purchasing miniatures and playing games, but they don't. But I'm not really interested in people purchasing miniatures. 3D print your minis, kit bash your minis, fucking whatever your minis. I don't give a shit, right? You don't have to buy the official minis, don't care, right? None of that matters to me, not bothered, right? You don't have to buy the books, none of that matters. But what I do like is setting, right, and being able to play in that setting with a bunch of you being weirdos. That's really exciting to me. Yeah, so for me, I'm like, right, what's the best way that we can build this as like a little system so everyone can play? It's the immediate take, right? Um, campaign, uh, yeah, so that's that's my immediate take. Building interest then add complexity is just more fun. Correct. Uh, they could even use a whole special room in the HQ to record how to play videos and make it super easy to go to. Rob, don't need uh, the minis. I'm changing the rules. Uh, the only thing is staying is the setting. <laughs> uh, um, it feels like a Blood Bowl League versus exhibition games. Exactly. Release the skirmish system for free. Include the rules for what you get under the basic gang boxes. Keep campaign stuff, more advanced gang stuff for themselves. Yeah. But anyway, let's talk about this. Uh, whether it's in the bad zones or the underhive, um, walking meals under control. So they move six inches. That feels like that's probably medium speed. Uh, weapon skill four, ballistic skill four, strength three, toughness three, two wounds, uh, initiative of three plus, and one attack. Uh, let me know if I've got any of this stuff wrong. Leadership seven, and I don't know what, clout. They've got six plus clout. Um, seven plus will, and eight plus intelligence. CL is cool. They have a coolness factor. All right, hold on. You're telling me I can make a gang that's just cooler than another gang. Like, I can just say, you're cool or not cool. Cool-headed, keep their shit together. I refuse to believe it's... I now refuse to believe that it's cool-headed, and I'm now only into, like, that their drip is on fire. That they've got, like, the best gang threads. That there's, like, a... Like, a, there's like, like award for the coolest gang... You take coolness check if you want to shoot somebody who isn't the closest model, right? Those war game is a clout stat as well, right? Yeah, obviously, right? It's a clout stat. That's what it is, right? We're changing, we're changing CL to clout. We've changed it, right? Six plus cool is not very cool. Oh, is that not very cool? Who's the coolest model in the game? Um, I don't care what you say. My stats tell me my gang's cooler than yours. Yeah, like the <laughs> the peasants are the most cool. Shut up. The lower the better. He has to pre-capture himself like cord or leader. If someone's head explodes next to you, you take a cool check or you be a coward. Oh my god. Okay, amazing. The cord or leader. So Rat Gang, your leader is got coolness four plus. That's right. Rat Gang leader is the coolest. Uh, you can even get tabs for leaders so the Jews think they're cooler. Oh my god, that's great. Okay, I love that. All right, great. Let's go. 
Uh, jokes on you. I shat myself for the game. <laughs> A Beastmaster is out with a shock stave and a Sean, a Sean, oh my god, shock stave and sawn off shotgun. Shock stave and sawn off shotgun. With solid and scatter ammo, all Beastmasters are equipped with mesh armor. Okay. When added to the gang or the start of the post battle actions, don't care about that, of the post battle sequence, don't care about that. If a Beastmaster has fewer than three exotic beasts, they may purchase additional exotic beasts. So, okay, so they've released the Ripper Jack. The Ripper Jack has been released, right? There we go. We know that. They've released the Millisaur. But I don't want to get the Rat Gang in the chat too excited. But they have not released the Wasteland Giant Rat. Oh my god. This is awesome. So you just basically just... You could build like a Nomad Gang. Because this is any... But you could build any gang, right? So you could build like a Goliath Gang. And then they just bring along their pet Outland Beastmaster. Pretty expensive though. Like... If you were going to have three Ripper Jacks, it's 210 points, because you can have, like, I mean, how many are you allowed to have? Exotic Beasts. No, the Beastmaster may only ever have one type of Exotic Beast. Okay. Um, you can take Giant Rats uh, and Bomb Rats in the same gang. Awesome. Exactly. Exactly. When your gang is panicking and running, you have to cool checks, not run away. And your leader can pass those checks for everyone with a radius because they yell at people and stay around. It's got to be like the Fonz check, like E. Six plus E. <laughs> Six plus E. Guys, <laughs> uh, um, best rules are the rules for resurrection. When your leader dies, then you can come back to life. Goliaths generally have the best cool stats. That's fun. They also have a generic hive scum models that let you build a gang based around a special figure rather than a real gang. Love that. Okay. This is great. This is this this now makes more sense to me. When I just think of it as just being I don't know why, and I don't know if anyone agrees with me or they find it confusing, but just knowing that I'm gonna build like a regular gang and then just add a dude who's cool and special is funky. Like I know my gang is also cool and special, but like that's fun. I like that. Uh, okay. So I'm allowed one dude. So if I want to go Vagina Beast, Ripper Jack, and, um, Beastmaster, I'm going to go for 170 credits. Pretty pricey. Nearly 20% of my gang. It's a lot of points. It's a lot of gold. I ain't got a lot of credits, man. I'm just a little poor fella trying to build a gang. 170 credits. Uh... Uh, there are hangers on brutes. Have you thought about maybe 2,000 cred tournament games instead? Uh, I'll have to ask like some people who know. Like Maybe 1,500 points is the right amount. Maybe 2,000 points. It depends. Like, if a 1,000 credit game would take two to three hours, I'd be conscious of taking it up a little bit more. Um, uh, this is where the campaign comes in, is you can start saving up. Yeah, okay. Right, but I don't mind. Like, like... Ultimately, like if you just do it, if you do, I would say fifteen hundred creds. You'd want to skill up characters, etc. Uh, if you like, you tend to play with five to seven models. The Nomad's Bug is two ten, and the Handler is forty. Twelve fifty gives you a few toys. Okay, worth discussing. Worth discussing. I'll discuss with some people. Ridiculous. If there was one game which I'm saying that I expected to allow a Dick and Vag Beast to be mixed, it was Necromunda. I think you're allowed to have look zero to two Outland Beastmasters. So I think, uh, Dave, you could have two Beastmasters, one running the Millisaur Dick Beast, and one running the Ripper Jack Vagina Beast. So if you wanted that, but obviously we're going to go for two Outland Beastmasters, double Wasteland Giant Rat, because that's the right play. Don't be ridiculous. Um, I find 1,000 creds a bit tight to build a starter gang. I think it was a 1,500 cred gang in the starter box. Okay. Um, uh, okay, first time is it is Dick Beast, Fadge Beast? Oh, okay, uh, Chippy 2, number 1. First time in here. We're talking about... <laughs> it's your first time in here. Probably just leave, bud. Like, like listen, if you like Warhammer and stuff and war games, like, maybe... Maybe stick around, like, but I don't know how to explain what this place is to any human now, where we are. This is, like, there's probably better stuff available to watch, like, if I'm honest. <laughs> don't give him a gift subscription! <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> uh, look after yourself, focus Twitch streamer. Um, 
<laughs> Check out the Beast War Scroll. Okay, I will. Um, uh, we're looking at Necromunda, is what we're doing. Monday, we do Age of Sigmar. Tuesday, we do Necromunda. Wednesday, we do painting. Thursday, we now do the old world. Friday, we do what we call Fuck Around Friday, where we look at everything. But then we also will do pretty much any other stuff available. We'll just hang out and talk about all sorts of things uh, because that's what we do. Um, uh, well, thanks. I'm in it for a month at least, I guess. Well, good luck. <laughs> when it's Total War Day. God damn it, Snake Bites. Shut up. I forgot I existed for five minutes. Right? You know I'm on a mission this year to make great content. I ain't got time for you. Right? I ain't got time for that. Okay. Shh. When Chaos Dwarfs comes out, obviously, we're playing that for a week, though. Like, that's fair. When Chaos Dwarfs comes out, we're allowed to do an entire week of Total War. That's fair. Everyone agrees that that's fair, right? That's really fair. No one can disagree with that. Please don't judge the entirety of the Unsworn Gamer just on what you see here today alone. <laughs> uh, to be honest, I only managed to get on on Tuesdays at this point. I know more about fucking Bomb Rats than the GHB, and I love it. Well, I'm glad you do. Okay. Uh, options. When added to a gang or at the start... Okay, we can add this. We know this. Special rules. Beast trainer. Unlike other exotic beasts, any belonging to a beast master must always try to remain within six inches of its owner rather than three inches. Okay, so they've got a little bit more little bit more room, unlike other exotic beasts. So normally, an exotic beast would need to be within three inches of its owner. But, because he's a beast trainer, six inches. That's pretty nice. That's pretty nice. You've got a little bit more... A little bit more room, especially if you get pushed back or something away from your beastie. It's pretty fun. Um, uh, okay, they tend to run away if they leave. Okay. One with a beast. A beast master specializes in the handling of one particular beast. Yeah. How dare you? How dare you imagine trying to be the Outland beast master who specializes in Ripper Jacks for £42.50. You must buy the Outland Beastmaster who is responsible for Miller Source, £42.50. Don't you fucking dare use one as the other. You are scum, right? Uh, it's a skilled trade. I hope assume you're calling on your two giant rats. Uh, <laughs> uh, right, okay. Um, when hired onto the gang, players must choose either Wasteland Giant Rats, Millisaurs, or Ripper Jacks as this Beastmaster's speciality. A Beastmaster can only ever have exotic beasts of the chosen type. No problem. Okay, a beastmaster has the fearsome skill. They also gain skill based on the best type, uh, on the type of beast they specialize in. Wasteland giant rats, you get the dodge skill. Millisaurs, you get the infiltrate skill, and ripper jacks, you get the cat four skill. Okay, it's just fun. Um, I don't know. I think Forge War, I think Necromunda might be the best thing, like best miniatures GW produce. Like I think, like maybe. Like there's a, there's a lot of stuff vying for that. They make some incredible stuff across all the ranges. Like Dodge is a six plus plus. Nice, nice. An invun save. Um. Okay, skill access. Beastmaster has access to following skill sets. Okay, exotic beast. Let's learn some more. Yeah, like even plastic necromunda is great. I agree, Dad Bod. I agree. The Millisaur given infiltrate is super cool. Guessing them, uh, that's them crawling through the big tunnels. Yeah, they said that in the narrative, right? That, like, because he's wearing, the Millisaur is wearing, well, the Beastmaster is wearing a Millisaur outfit. So the bugs dig little tunnels and infiltrate against the enemy. And then the, bu the Beastmaster literally follows them like a fucking creep in the walls. You know, when you watch the movie and there's, like, someone living in the walls, that's the Beastmaster, right? Uh, best thing are the cherubs. Oh, okay. Uh, right, so Exotic Beasts. The worlds of the Imperium are host to many peculiar and wonderful creatures. A bit like the Twitch chat. And Necromunda is no exception. It is well documented throughout the ages that humans have a strange propensity for keeping all manner of creatures as pets. Fascinated by their behavior and comforted by their loyalty in this, the denizens of Necromunda are no different to humans anywhere else in the galaxy. What is unique to Necromunda, though, are the type and variety of pets that people choose to keep. Okay. Exotic beasts are purchased as war gear and should be recorded on their owner's fighter card accordingly. However, there are exotic beasts that differ to normal war gear is that they have their own fighter card, which details their unique stats, skills, and weaponry. They follow all the normal rules for a fighter with the following exceptions. Okay. Interesting. 
lots of exceptions, which we're not going to bother read. Okay, let's find out the other stuff. Let's find out what we can take. All right, AOS minis are pretty good, to be fair. I mean, 40k minis are pretty good, to be fair. Like, the new guard stuff is, I think, legit. I, like, there isn't much they've released recently where I haven't been a huge fan. But then I think I've not been a huge fan because I'm not into those personally. Like, I think the Eldari are really well done. I just don't like the Eldari miniatures. Um, pets can also, in some cases, level up. What? Uh, can the beasts get, get skill upgrades? There must be some funny combos. Uh, so, apparently, yes. Maybe. All right, so let's start out with the Wasteland Giant Rat, okay? There is a saying on Necromunda that if you throw a spanner in a hive, it's more likely to hit a rat than the floor. Wow. Um, wow. Uh, and it's not entirely untrue. Incredibly resilient and in numbers that make the teeming mass of humanity seem small, Wasteland Giant Rats will probably be around long after mankind is gone. Stu... Thanks for subscribe, resubscribing for 20 months, Stu. Let's be, but let's be friends, Stu. Let's go. Oh, there was this X-Files episode with the mutant guy that crawled through vents. I hated that. Um, okay, so they move five inches, so they don't move as fast as the Beastmaster. Uh, their weapon skill four, but their ballistic skill five. Oh, boy. Strength three, toughness three. They got one wound each. Uh, they've got initiative three. Their cool factor is seven plus. But higher is worse. So they're not very cool, which I do not agree with. Um, can giant rats get guns? I don't think it is. Uh, by the way, uh, Kitbash Casper on uh, Instagram is starting to grade kits for their neck running Kitbash bits. They have a full rubric. <sighs> Dad bod, send me the link. Okay. Um, pets tier, let's go. I feel like this is the deepest end that you can enter into as a Warhammer person or as a wargaming person. This is it. It's this or historicals is the way you go. Like, this is the way. Okay. Fighters with this rule are easily replaceable and expected to die. So this is a special rule. Should a fighter with this special rule be seriously injured or be taken out of action, friendly fighters that within three inches do not have to take a nerve test unless they also have this special rule. So giant rats are expendable, unfortunately. Therefore, but they don't basically set off panic tests. Okay, great. Um, a pets tier list. Let's do it. Never more than one meter from a rat. During the update roster step of the post-battle sequence, if any waste and giant rats are removed from a fighter card, they're replaced with new ones for no cost. <gasps> okay, so you you just basically always replace a giant rat for free. It's just an expendable little rodent, dude. Okay, instinct for survival. Waste and giant rats have the dodge skill. Uh, should a waste and giant rat become a specialist? <laughs> Give him a little bandana. Maybe give him a little jacket. Like, <laughs> give him a special name. Oh, my God. Specialist giant rat. I'm in. Um, oh, my God. Uh, should a wasteland become a giant specialist? It, becomes, uh, it has access to the following skill sets. Uh, agility and cunning. Okay. Pick him up and give him a little present. Send him on his way. Exactly. A wasteland giant rat may not purchase weapons or war gear. Boo. A wasteland giant rat is armed with fangs. Get them a little waistcoat. Yeah, look, you're a specialist now, son. Welcome to the military. Welcome to the gang, specialist giant rat. Off you go on your adventure. Um, it, but it's the worst if you shoot someone, miss them, and the stray bullet hits your own rat. Sad. <laughs> Give that rat a wage. Yeah, that, that rat deserves an income. Right? Uh... <laughs> Okay, right, so Minasaur, next. Uh, can we just, how do we feel about getting a specialist rat? I feel like we're in on specialist rat. This is pretty good. Uh, uh, you would have to give a skilled up rat, uh, you'd have to name a skilled up rat, Jean-Claude Van Damme. Oh my God. Uh, hold on, Dad Bod has sent me a link to something. I'm not sure what it is at the moment. Someone is doing blooded kill team kit bashing review. Okay, that is a, that's intense. But, oh my god. Number of sprues, 40 heads for 10 models. Okay, this is a lot. I'm coming back to follow. I'm coming back to that in a bit. Right, okay. This is... Necromunda is too weird for me. It's too deep. 
it's too deep. Uh, job, there's right giant rat STLs. Let's go. Obviously, um, we'll do that. But we need to go past rats. We need to move on. We need to go to the Millisaur, Penis Beast. Probably bought to Necromunda long ago to help with mining or underground vermin. Millisaurs have spread across much of the planet. Rock-skinned worms. They burrow into everything. They're almost impossible to shift once they lay claim to an area. Right? They move six, which is good. Weapon skill four. Uh, again, ballistic skill five. They've got two wounds each. And they've got two attacks each. Okay, nice. Burrowing. A millisaur is able to burrow beneath the metal and rock concrete of the underhive, passing quickly through hidden crawl spaces and buried vents. A millisaur may move freely under the impassable terrain if it has sufficient movement to do so, but may not end its movement on or within impassable terrain. Uh, okay, so it can move through it, but not on it. Uh, ambush predator. Millisaurs have the infiltrate skill. Okay. Armored hide. Millisaurs have a 5 plus armor save. That sounds like it's pretty good for a beastie. Should a Millisaur become a specialist? Again, gets a little waistcoat. That's fantastic. That is quite powerful. Uh, that they can move through uh, buried vents and stuff. Infiltrate. Ooh, okay. Uh, that's fun. Okay, so that's what Infiltrate is. Uh, should a Millisaur become a specialist? As the following skill sets. Second, agility second, primary combat. A Millisaur may not purchase weapons. Boo. A Millisaur is armed with a fanged maw. Okay, so odd bit that I don't want to get into too much, but on this page, it doesn't tell me what the fanged maw does. Here. It doesn't even tell me where I would learn where the fanged maw attack profile is. Like, so that feels like that's a, a problem in of itself. Which I'm... Uh, all the rules for weapons are in the core rules. It's a mess. Okay, so... But I would put that here, right? But then they put a picture instead, which is pretty fun, so... I don't know. Not sure. Okay, Ripperjack, Vagina Monster. Numerous Helm Wars have tried to purge Decrobunda of the abominable alien Ripperjacks. Though they are now probably as much a part of the world as gangs and corpse starch, flying fanged horrors, they are the reason the smart gangers scan the ceiling before entering an abandoned dome. Uh, they move seven inches, so pretty fast. Uh, they are not good at shooting, finally. Uh, Ballistic skill six, but weapon skill four. Um, two attacks each. Two wounds. Uh, uh, Ripper Jack's not as good as using guns as rats. <laughs> See you later, bud. Um, right, so a Ripper Jack ignores all terrain may move freely between levels without restriction and can never fall. It may not, however, ignore impassable terrain. Okay. Um, Solitary Hunter, Ripperjack never gains the benefit of an assist or grants assist to other fighters. So it's just a little solo warrior. Enveloping attack, an enemy fighter engaged by Ripperjack suffers minus two modifier to any initiative checks made to the retreat basic action. In addition, any reaction attacks made against Ripperjack suffer an additional minus one to hit. Ooh. Um, thank you, Crossout Long Strike. Uh, hello, Terry. A uh, Ripperjack may not purchase weapons, and you can have a specialist Ripperjack. Okay. Hot. Into the Magna Forums. What is this? The Wasteland Workshop. So the next thing is about vehicles and building vehicles. Choose a base vehicle template, purchase vehicle upgrades, and then purchase war gear. So, like, this is this is how you build your big trucks, right? The big trucks here. Uh, and then you, you either get a light vehicle... A medium vehicle is 130 credits. A walker um, is in here as well. There's, they're not a heavy vehicle. Only a medium vehicle. Uh, uh, there's a comprehensive rules PDF on 1D4, but it's a 490 pages. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, purchasing vehicle upgrades. Um, amazing. Look at this pilot. You can get engine upgrades. Engine shell, gas promethium engine, a nitro burner, smoke vents. This is a deep fucking rabbit hole. I know. This is what I mean. But they keep releasing the stuff. Like, I almost think the reason that they... I think if you got into Necromunda full time, that's it, you're gone. They can't mark... Like, the right thing for Games Workshop to do is create loads of very easy to get into games that you can pick up play, buy, pick up play play, move on, get the next thing for that game, get into the other game. 
but Necromunda is like to prepare to prepare to be doomed. You are doomed into this forever. Like there's all the rules for the vehicles. This is a lot. This is a lot. Oh my god. Vehicle war gear. The vehicle rules are a whole thing. Your car can break down. You repair it on the go. Like what? Yeah. Booby tracked fuel tanks, body spikes, headlights, a kill switch. If the vehicle is wrecked as a result of the hit engine, subtract one from the lasting damage table roll. Smoke launchers, wheel scythes, flare launchers. Um, like so many crazy things. Uh, Rage Pyro. The ultimate rules. Oh my god. What a good link. The Necromunda ultimate rules. Intro and acknowledgements. Change log. A change log? Amazing. The ultimate rules. Part one, how to play. This is a thousand pages long. One thousand pages long. Are you fucking joking? It's a thousand pages. <laughs> oh, good luck, ADHD. It's <laughs> oh my god, amazing. Okay, rolling dice. This looks like it's like fan made, though, right? So like, there's a load of like info in here that's actually very relevant and makes sense. Uh, good lord, the reason for Ritalin. Two-dimensional learn sight, measurement, fighter and vehicle status, fighter status, vehicle status. Okay, what fighter status can we have? Active, engaged, uh, prone, seriously injured, common conditions, ready, broken, out of ammo, blaze. We're at page 23. Okay, lots to learn. Okay, well, we're going to leave Necromunda Tuesday here being excited about the game uh, and please do join us again next week for more Necromunda Tuesday.